Welcome Slack Tide Nation to another Slack Tide Travel Guide. This time, we're getting our paddles wet touring Mule Key in the Florida Keys. Mule Key is a mangrove island that hosts a variety of birds and other wildlife. Mangrove islands like Mule Key are integral in the ecology of the Florida Keys and the surrounding areas as they act as a home and refuge for many of the juvenile species that inhabit the area. As you can see on the satellite image, Mule Key is a popular destination for many of the tours operating out of Key West. On this hot summer afternoon, we hooked up with Key West Eco Tours for a private kayaking and snorkel trip aboard one of their Java Cats, a 22-foot catamaran specially designed to sail the flats in and around the Florida Keys. The cost of the trip was roughly $600 for the day for up to six passengers, and you can book this excursion or any of the other offerings at keywestecotours.com. We started the day with a short boat ride from the Key West Marina out to Mule Key. The Java Cat gave us a smooth ride and we took in a cold beverage and enjoyed the breeze as we crossed the flats. Our guide today was Captain John. He was both helpful and friendly and entertained us with information about the mangrove ecosystem the entire day. If you've never been on an eco tour such as this, the goal of the operator is twofold. On one hand, they want their passengers to have an enjoyable day on the water. On the other, their goal is to educate you so that, hopefully, we can be more mindful of the impact our lifestyle choices have on the environment. For much of this video, I'm going to remain silent and turn it over to Captain John and let him educate you, the viewer, on the mangrove island and its inhabitants. We started the day with a quick paddle from the Java Cat out to Mule Key, and I'll be honest with you, Captain John really impressed me with his balance on that kayak. You're paddling over grass flats, which are teeming with life. There are fish everywhere, so if you're a fish person, there's a lot to look at. After navigating the exterior of Mule Key, Captain John takes us through the middle of the mangrove island. Life survived for hundreds of millions of years. Again, this is a real good luck. You look left or right. Oh, you see? The trees, branches, roots sticking up out of the soft mud. No land in the mangrove island. We are going to talk about that later. You see what looks like little spiders running up and down branches and roots? They're not spiders, it's the mangrove tree crab. Ah! There's lots of birds and fish, seabirds and saltwater fish. And then there's these little crabs. Just saw one. Snake. Anyway, so the horseshoe crab, besides being great for cancer research and therapy, Horseshoe crabs on the underside have like a dozen light receptors. They function like eyes, but they're not true eyes. It basically, it tells the critter he's gone upside down, exposes his soft body parts to a predator. So he uses that long, pointy tail they have not as a weapon, but as a pendulum. So ah. they flip themselves upright. So on the top of that hard shell, are the uh, crab's two primary eyes. Two big primary eyes. These ones are constructed and function exactly like the human eye. All the advancements in eye care, ophthalmology, cataract surgery, all that stuff was performed on the horse crab first. Huh. So, yeah. He's a helpful little guy. My wife was holding the camera the entire time we were kayaking here and I was doing the paddling. I've poked a lot of fun at her over her comments at Captain John's narration. She sounds awfully Midwestern. If you didn't see a horseshoe crab before, there's another one right here where the bugs come up on the bottom. It's very, it's like a little green helmet. looks like old school motorcycle helmet. I tried to freeze frame this so you can make out the horseshoe crab. You can just see her right there underneath the surface. We were a little too far to make out all of Captain John's narration on this video, but he discussed all the cormorants here. The place is teeming with bird life. Cormorants, uh, the magnificent frigate, gave a lot of information about the magnificent frigate and cormorants, about how they survive down here, how they breed here, and, and how some birds only nest down here in the Keys in these mangrove islands. Yeah, because I can hear that when we get close. You can hear a rough song. Not so sweet. Oh, on the front. Oh, that's one of the five. Oh, 
Oh, look. Yep. How do I zoom? Mule Key is positively teeming with bird life, and if you look to the right of the mangroves and you approach them in these kayaks, you can see the birds flying out of the trees uh, just one after another. There were hundreds of them here. Oh, 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 look. Oh. What's he doing? <laughs> Oh, 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 oh that right there? Whoa! That's a baby bear. Oh, watch out! Shit! Moon's <laughs> not new on strike Mahara. Fish, fish. Snapper. And the mini ones. Oh, booze it. After we had circumnavigated the entire island, Captain John pulled us in this little cove and gave us a little rundown on how the mangrove trees uh, create fresh water. Uh, we saw a green heron in the here. here. Also, he told us about how they reproduce, how they basically build these islands on their seed ponds. That is, believe it or not, heron. Most people think heron. Yeah, big So that is, so remember we're talking about Anyway, green leaving plants need fresh water, sweet water to live. I like the third saltiest place on the planet. So trees, oh. lots of root systems. Every one of the roots surrounded by a protective membrane when you drink the seawater. Keep telling, 90% of the sun. Huh. So kind of like water. reverse osmosis. Yeah. It is. It's really wonderful. But natural. Desal is. Just, just doing better. So at the bottom of the water, at the tips of the branches, you find all sorts of yellow and brown leaves. Those are all sacrificial leaves. Some salts get past them. Push through places all the way at the Ooh, it's forward a You're good. These fall off and down the sea. Trees have now turned seawater into fresh water. Today and only then. A big seed pod you see hanging above your head. 15 to 18 inches long by the end of summer. Propagule, lifeboat for the tree. Food and fresh water in it, good for a year, survives the sea state for a whole year. It grows its weight, so its roots are always facing it. High tides and hurricanes, they carry that seed all the way to India and Africa, make a mango bun. Most of them get stuck real close to the tree that grew them. Low time, right now, perfect time. They drop into the water, set root, and pop some mango tree. Grow up about 25, 30 years, and then they start to grow out, just like what's above us, from that. Okay. 50 or 60 feet up in the sky, they drop down this vertical area of each of the water surface. Okay. On the surface. That's the boat. Reach the water surface, spread out into thousands of these tiny finger crop roots, which are totally visible right now on this big road time. It's anchoring themselves in the soft mud, several feet of soft mud, and then a hard concrete called oolite. So nobody puts down a deep root, everybody spreads out. So these are barrier islands, sheltered, keys, from them. It's 220 miles. Coral reefs south of the Keys, millions of acres of grass, big wet carpet. Historically, the Keys been pretty good. Some trees, grass, coral reefs. Most important, three quarters of all the birds and the fish native to the Keys spend some part of their life. They have lots of shade, carpet, protection, and food. Things grow up in relative safety when they reach the juvenile stage and slowly make their way out to the Gulf of Mexico. Atlantic Ocean for adults. We smoke all the sponge guards back here. You don't see the little larvae stage of things hanging out in the trees. You don't see that big fish. Careful again. You don't see that big fish swimming out there in deep water. We catch things in the juvenile stage. That's when they're not. Deep in the center of this whole place, you might find the very first one tree. We started the whole thing. All these spring flowers. Super dense and strong in the center. It's actually quite weak out here on the edge. The big storms come along and naturally bring the island back. This is all a result of Burma. We have a piece of smoke that's high. We had a lot of weather for Burma. It got smashed into the side of the island in these pockets. It's totally natural. Uh, so, very dynamic place, constantly evolving. But basically, we got three things in the system the trees, the grass, and the sponge. 
trees is the most important part. We don't have the trees, birds, fish, or like floral keys. Really amazing plant. Boy, has the ability to turn seawater. I got some. Uh... I like Captain John's method of the stand up paddle. All right, professional docking right here. No pressure. <laughs> We're letting. Yeah, got it. Safe. Let's see it for one moment. You got it. Get this out of the way. All right. Nice and easy, nice and slow on the way up. Super got it. Slick. Helps when you're 110 pounds. Ain't tight. Though. And a former gymnast. Former gymnast. <laughs> Come on. It's like. No, I'm not the only dance, one. around here. Dance with a padded floor. What are you talking about? You got it. There you go. Good. Oh, oh, oh! I think he's winning. Point. Yeah. He did not fall. Yay! <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> when our kayaking tour of Mule Key was over with, Captain John pulled up the anchor and we sailed over to a sponge garden where we did some uh, snorkeling and, and saw a lot of uh, Caribbean lobster and uh, stone crabs. Uh, it was really culmination of a great day. As we finish up our adventure and sail into the Key West Marina here, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it and share it. Subscribe to the channel. We appreciate all of you guys spending your time with us here. Uh, if you're interested in doing an uh, excursion like this, reach out to Key West Eco Tours. I'm sure those guys will be able to help you out. And uh, remember, I hope you guys get out there and find your own slack tide to enjoy somewhere.